Socrates mentioned qualities of a judge, and I quote, four things belong to a judge, to hear courteously, to answer wisely, to consider soberly, and to decide impartially. Justice Sadasivam possesses all these four qualities in abundance. May I now request Honorable Mr. Justice P. Sadasivam to deliver his presidential address. Most respected Rashtrapati ji, Mr. Justice Singh B, my esteemed colleague and judge of the Supreme Court of India, Sri Parasaran, Sri Harish Shalve, former Honorable Chief Justice of India, sitting judge of the Supreme Court of India, former judges of the Supreme Court, Mr. L.K. Advani ji, other distinguished senior members of the bar, ladies and gentlemen, I consider it a distinct honor to preside and preside over and address the August gathering who have assembled here for, for the NKP Salve Foundation first memorial lecture series on governance and the constitution. Sri NKP Salve served the nation in various capacities. He commands great adoration and respect as true visionary who accomplished the missions that he undertook. Governance is a form of social contract between the state and its citizens aimed at fulfilling their needs and aspirations. Governance requires decision making by a representative government, but is not synonymous with those in authority. Rather, it is the idea of collective efforts where all institutional and individual stakeholders must perform their respective roles. In my view, governance in modern times is very much akin to judicial decision making as it seeks to balance and to find the middle path between seemingly conflicting interests in the society. Our constitution makers foresaw the challenge of governing newly independent India divided and subdivided on lines of caste, class, gender, and language. To overcome the same, they laid down a holistic framework of constitutional governance as a guide to all future governments. The ideals of justice, liberty, equality and fraternity enshrined in the preamble were to be ethical value of governance. The character of governing state was to be secular, socialist, democratic, and republican in nature. Right to Information Act is a salutary as it provides practical regime for citizens to secure access to information in order to promote transparency and accountability in governance and ensures deepening democratic engagement through participation of citizens in the process of governance with the state. The second Administrative Reforms Committee report, Commission report rightly calls right to information as the master key to good governance and it must prove to be one. To ensure responsive governance, a number of state governments have passed laws guaranteeing, guaranteeing timely justice, timely delivery of public services as a matter of citizens' rights. Citizens' charters are made effective by stipulating the service levels and also the remedy if these service levels are not met, they are imposing penalty. Citizens are now involved in the assessment and maintenance of ethics in important government institutions and offices. The initiative is unique and must be replicated if found successful. To ensure that disputes do not lead to further delay in access to services, Permanent low adalats have been established under Section 22B of the Legal Services Amendment Act 2002. The aim is to provide compulsory pre-litigative mechanism 
for conciliation and settlement of disputes relating to public utility services such as transport, postal communication, supply of power, services in hospital, insurance service, etc. With the emergence of information and communication technologies, a new form of governance have emerged as a way of reaching out the people. Anti-corruption measures undertaken must strike the right balance between the need to protect honest officials from undue harassment while protecting persons making disclosure. Accountability can be achieved only when the law works, laws work as intended with minimum waste and delays and inspire confidence of the people. It may be apt to recall the words of Gandhiji, I quote, when you are in doubt, recall the face of the poorest and the weakest man and ask yourself if the step you contemplate is going to be any use to him, then you will find your doubts and your self melting away, unquote. Thus, governance must ensure that even the most marginalized sections of the people has access to social justice and equal treatment. Ultimately, it is the citizens at the receiving end who are the best judges of quality and quantity of services administered for their benefit. Public opinion acts as a mirror to assess effectiveness of governance. The governing process should provide opportunity to people to actively participate in decision making. On the eve of 64th Republic Day, Rashtrapati ji, the President of India has very rightly pointed out, I quote, the solutions to problems have to be found through discussion and conciliation of views. People must believe that governance is an instrument for good and for that we must ensure good governance, unquote. Finally, in a democratic system that is governed by rule of law, fairness of action, propriety, responsibility, institutional impeccability, and non-biased justice delivery system constitute the bedrock of good governance. Thank you very much.